Renzo, a fusion of dancehall, Latin, soca, and reggaeton. That is Mr. Renzo. Tune in from 5 p.m. this Friday with Yolan Leacock inside Culture Fusion and Mr. Renzo bringing his brand new remix featuring Cotty Ranks. So tune in this Friday with Mr. Renzo. Renzo, Cotty Cot, Cotty Ranks. Patron. <laughs> Ya tú sabes que eres más bella que el número uno. Mámonos, mámonos, Mr. Renzo to the world. Swap me treat, treat, treat it. Hey, yeah, me girl. Just everybody who have eyes them could see that them girl is sweet but she's sweeter. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine. You were, you was, you was going and, and start with something. Uh, introduction. You, you didn't hold up to your word. No, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Culture Fusion. Our special guest today is recording artist Mr. Renzo. To the world. <laughs> to the world. <laughs> to the world. <laughs> I've been practicing that all week. <laughs> You're doing it better than me. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. You know, uh, Tobago is always my second home. Mm-hmm. And I, I really feel grateful and appreciated that you, you reached out to me and and um, wanted to do an interview with me because I would have actually reached out to you, uh, but you, you kind of beat, beat me to it. Beat so it, yeah. Thanks so much, you know. Yeah. Now you're Venezuelan born and TNT raised. Tell us how you got into music. Well, um, as a kid, I never wanted to be an artist because I was very, very shy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember singing in some of the choirs and stuff, and I wanted to be in the back of the choir because I was scared that, you know, the, 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 the people would be like, you know, he's singing real off. So I used to be, I, I had a nice voice back then, mm-hmm. and I used to be in the back of the choir and used to be lip syncing, like, just yeah. because I didn't want the people to know that, I, you know. 
Yeah. I was so, so shy. And then one day, um, in my teens, like 15, 16 years old, I, I, I was just singing karaoke and I went out and um, to some karaoke events and I realized people enjoyed my voice. Yeah. So at age 20, you know, 20, going into 21, I was singing um, a karaoke tune, Home By Me, and um, all around the came in and he um, heard me singing and he was like, who's this guy singing? And my mom was like, that, that's uh, my son, Renzo. He said, well, this boy could real sing. Yeah. What's he doing with his talent? And, uh, and she was like, I don't know, he's too shy. He don't want to go and sing out and, in front of the public and thing. And then he came into the room and, you know, he gave me a, a kind of, you know, like a coach. Uh, what are you doing, boy? No, 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 no. You, 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 can't, you can't be um, wasting your talent. Singing karaoke, you have too much talent, you bilingual, you, you, you do so much and, and you just wasting your, your, your time home singing karaoke, come, come, I'll take you to the studio. Yeah, yeah. So he carried me to the yeah. studio and, and um, we demoed a, 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 my first tune was, was more of it, eh? mm-hmm. but it was in the dem- demo stage and he put me to singing um, Maracas. Um, Uncle Sam used to have an event every Sunday, where it was just crowded, crowded, like it had about, about 400 people in that event. And all around, I was like, um, you going and sing there, right? I say, me? No, 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 I'm not going and sing. No, you have to go and sing. Go and sing. You'll see, when you go on the stage, you'll see how the feeling of, of, of being an artist. So when I went on the stage now, it was like a electrifying feeling. Now, and I was feeling like um, a totally different person. Yeah. When I started yeah. performing with you now, it was like I got into character easily. And I was like, I felt like, you know, this is for me. Yeah. So after performing now, um, Everybody comes to me and is like, yeah, you're real bad, you're real bad. And, and at that time, um, I wasn't really in talking terms with my dad. And my dad was actually in the crowd. So when my dad came now and, and gave me a hug yeah. and he said, son, you did very good. That, w- that was like the motivation yeah. um, to, to, to do music because he's a very hard person to please. Mm-hmm. And for him to tell me that, at that point, I was like, wow, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And that feeling on a stage is like no other feeling in the world because I used to be in sports, play football, play basketball mm-hmm. and that feeling on stage is a totally different feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Now your music is described as having a unique fusion of Latin and soca. Tell us who were your musical influences growing up. Well I I'm I consider myself Trinidadian, more Trinidadian than than Venezuelan because I grew up here. Mm-hmm. So my my inspiration in the, the Caribbean side of things was always um like Kitchener, Sparrow, um, Super Blue, um, who else? Uh, well, Marshall Montano, growing up back then, you know, and and in the Latin side of things, uh, Daddy Yankee was like yeah. he's like to be the king of um of reggaeton, yeah. and and two thousand one, two thousand two, when he came out with um Gasolina. I came up with this idea where I want to fuse the soca with the reggaeton and call it Sokaton. Yeah. And um, people wasn't really taking it too serious because I don't think um, the Caribbean was too much um, embraceable of, of the reggaeton yet. Yeah. But I had the vision always to do something different and to try something new. And I remember the director told me, you know, stick to this and you know, stick to this, it will, it will catch on, it will catch on. So I, I eventually stuck to it, but I was still doing um, different genres in between like um, pure soca, yeah. um, pure dancehall, pure reggaeton, you know. But, you know, I always try to combine the two, or it, even if it's in pure Spanish, it, it has a, 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 a Caribbean influence, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, you introduced a new so- sub-genre uh, called Socaton, which is a fusion of yeah. soca and reggaeton. And you talked about, you know, there being a bit of resistance to the way in which you decided to experiment with the soca genre. How does it feel to now have your music not only appreciated in Trinidad and Tobago, but also in Europe and Latin America? Well, you know, that that is that there is just motivation, you know, just for me to continue doing music. And, and you know, during this pandemic where you can even, um, you can even explore and do new things and try new things and, and, and not have that fear or... You know, trying to get into the season or whatever. You're just doing you more. Yeah. Um, I'm able to, to, to touch different sides of me that I didn't even think I could have um, and capable of doing, you know. Yeah. And I, right now, I'm working on my um, Latin album. Mm-hmm. 
and um, that just gave me more time to just work on that project and to, to, to continue to release stuff on the Latin side too. Nice. So I'm, I'm very grateful to get the love in the Caribbean and Europe and Latin America, you know, but I'm still, my goal is really uh, for the music to really reach worldwide. And not just for me alone, but our culture. I want our culture to reach out there, you know. And if it takes me to, to, to open the door or if somebody else could open the door, you know, because music is not like a, a selfish thing. It shouldn't be just for you alone. Mm-hmm. It should be touching everyone. Everyone's hearts, um, emotions, uh, whether it's, 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 it's a feeling or vibration, if, if they're going through a stressful time. It should be about that. It shouldn't be about ego. I'm better than you. You know, I should I should have that opportunity. No, it should be like you know, you're just spreading, you're spreading the energy out to the universe. You know, yeah. so that's why I came up with to the world. You know, to the world, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you have collaborated with some of the biggest names in dancehall and soca. Could you tell us about yeah. some of those collaborations? Well, in the, in the um, dancehall side of things, I've done work with Charlie Black, Elephant Man, Tini Man. Um, Idonia, mm-hmm. uh, this latest project is Kachi Ranks, who I consider a, a legend yeah. in the dance world yeah. arena because I, I grew up watching that. I, I grew up um, going in the maxi and listening to Kachi Ranks. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I have been privileged to, to work with him, and he's a very humble individual. You almost talk like every day. I, I think I have that connection um, with, with, with him than any other artist, even um, in Trinidad and Tobago. And, you know, working with him and listening to his side of things and, you know, it, 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 it kind of um, put my mind in a different frame, you know. So that's, that, that's the, the, the dancehall side of things and the, and the Caribbean side of things now. Well, sorry, the, the Trinidad side of things I work with Nessa Preppy, who are... Uh, one of my biggest songs, uh, Mr. Killer. Uh, there's so many clubs, uh, baby. <laughs> yeah. I always try, try to, to, to mix what I could do and, and try to touch their fan base as well. You know? Yeah. Now, in recent years, you decided to go back to your reggaeton roots with the help of world renowned producer Russian. Tell us how that partnership came about. Yes. Well, that, that, that project was uh, actually about five years old. And, well, he heard my talent and he was like, you know, Renzo, you have the ability to, to target this market, you know. Uh, why don't you try to do a pure reggaeton and yeah. I'm going to work on three, three singles for you. I was like, yeah, cool, no problem. Yeah. So at the time, um, he sent me three demos uh, from a writer who's like an international reggaeton artist right now. And at that time, he was, he was um, trying to... Um, open the door to, to get into that market yeah. but he was, he was still young and upcoming and when I heard those songs I was like yes I, I want those songs I want to do it so we end up um, we end up climbing to, to Miami to record um, the three songs I didn't get to meet the writer but I yeah. spoke to him over the phone and um, uh, for the people who don't know who he is now his name is Jay Cortez he's like um, one of the top reggaeton artists who's working um, alongside uh, J Balvin, Bad Bunny, Daddy Yankee, uh, Nicky Jam, you know, so having that opportunity to, to actually um, see Russian side of things because he's a, he's a perfectionist, he's a very hard person to work with and a uh, uh, person hard to please. Yeah. You know, you could bring about 60 songs and you'll be like, nah, I don't, uh, and, and, and in your mind, you're thinking, you know, that's, yeah. that's a hit, you say, nah, that's not a hit. Yeah. You'll be that, that real to you. And to work alongside with him and some of his um, top engineers, that was a, a different experience. Not only the, the music side of things, but visually, uh, also work with uh, Jones, he's, uh, uh, he worked with um, Pitbull, uh, Flo Rider. So doing that vi- visual side of things now, you know, I felt like, you know, a different artist altogether on a different level, you know. So um, to work with uh, people of that caliber and that experience, you know, made me... Yeah, you get me? Hear me now, yeah. Yeah. Right, now, you can hear me? Yes, I'm here, you okay. know. Yeah. 
Now, as you've mentioned, into the Latin market, tell us how important it is for you to express your versatility as an artist to have that international appeal. Well, being yourself is, is one of the main factors of being an artist. You know, uh, it, it can't be the next the, the next Daddy Yankee or the next Marshall. You have to be yourself and you have to be unique and, and express yourself as a as an individual and as an artist and traveling in, in, in places and doing some of the biggest tours in Colombia, uh, I was able to, to feel that energy of the crowd and, you know, actually feeling like a like a, a superstar out there because yeah. uh, they gravitate so much with our energy and, and and vibes of the soca that, you know, when, you, when you're performing on a stage now, they're not accustomed with that, that interaction. Yeah. And for me to go out there and interact and give them that connection, the people out there were, were loving it, you know, and... And that's, that's the advantage I have as an artist to, to live in Trinidad and to be schooled in this art form and being able to go out there and express it in a different um, level is an amazing experience. Yeah. Now, what is the biggest lesson you have learned thus far in your career? Um, you have to be very patient. Um, you can't let anything frustrate you because, um, you know, you'll always get the people who don't like you, who... who, who who will try to bring you down, who will yeah. say, nah, that, that's not good enough, you're not good enough. You have to have that gut feeling and you have to have that love and that passion no matter what. And that's what I have, you know. Yeah. No matter what anybody could tell me, that won't stop me from doing what I, I want to do. And and even if um, someone out there in the, in the crowd will be like, nah, Renzo, you, you, you can't perform. Yeah. You'll always have that kind of people. Yeah. Um, that will be like a motivation to me. That will be like, you know what, um, what I have to work on to please this man, right? And then I'll, try, I'll, I'll work on a different level now to try to make myself better because every day you have to always make yourself better. You can't, you, there's no such thing as perfection. You always learn every day. And that's what I, I learned as being an artist. Be very patient, um, perfect your craft. Uh, if you're going out in a studio and to record a tune, no matter if you have to do 500 takes, you have to be pleased about what you put in now because the end of the day, according to what Marshall told me, once it's out there, you can't change it, you know? Yeah. You can't tweak it. Yeah. So you have to make sure your, your stuff out there and properly done and make sure your marketing is in point and you have your team back in here. Yeah. And what is your ultimate goal as a musician? My ultimate goal, I would say, is to just throw in some of these places that I, I never even imagined you know, going to places like Dubai, yeah. places that people even know about our our um, fusion or our genre, you know, just to, to experiment on those those um, countries yeah. and also for my music to be heard worldwide, to, to reach that level. To the where, world, yeah. You know, yeah, to the world, billboard, you know. Yeah. Yeah. If, and any 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 um, number, any billboard, I'll be very happy. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, now I'm an athlete and it's a question I ask all my guests and you're the sixth guest on my show. Yeah. What is your favorite sport? Um, my favorite sport? Well, that's very hard because, you know, living in Trinidad, we, 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 have, we are very seasonal. Mm -hmm. So one, one season we'll have cricket, one season we'll have football, one season we'll, we'll, we'll lock into the NBA. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm pretty much like a sports person. I, I like... Oh, I like you know, the sports that we grew up mm -hmm. playing and, and spectating, you know. So, I would say cricket, football, basketball, um, I would say is my top three, yeah. And if you were to pick one? If I was to pick one, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm more gravitating now to basketball. To basketball? To be quite honest, yeah. Who's your favorite yeah, player? In quite the honest. Who's your favorite player in the NBA? Well, Kim, King James, of King course. King James? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, King James, of course. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> I can't so wait. I can't wait for that season. I can't wait for that season to start and to see the the, the four or five yeah. Lakers come over there and, and start a match up side. Yeah. And all the haters, all the LeBron haters, <laughs> he will prove it to you all that he is the greatest. He's the greatest at, at this era. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, because Michael Jordan is the greatest of all times. Yes. Um. Yes and no, I would say because I believe that um, each era mm -hmm. determines who is the greatest. So mm -hmm. at, at, I would say between the 19th going up to the 2000s, mm -hmm. 
Jordan was the greatest of all time. You know, because um, at, at that time, because you know the skill sets change. People start to do different things, new things, and certain skill sets that they used back then it will work in this era. So you can't really compare because it's a hard thing. Because you know the the rules change, the skill sets change, the, the athletes, the training patterns change. You know, it's come like you know um, you compare Nintendo to PlayStation Five. Okay. You know. Yeah. yeah. And, That's and, a good I, and I love, yeah, and I love Nintendo. I I I will play a Nintendo game and and play on that um, for for days. For days, more no, than a No sleep, time. no food. No no sleep, no food because uh-huh. back then you couldn't save the game. I I'll do that with a Nintendo game rather than a PS5 because I grew up with that era and, and that era. Mm-hmm. But you can't say that 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 that's a better console yeah. than the PS5, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. All right, so tell us about your new remix, Marlo, featuring Cutty Ranks. Yeah. How did that collaboration come about? Well, I have to thank um, Wendell Nightfall, who played a very important role in my management. Um, he made the connection. He was like, Renzo, you want to work with um, Cutty Boy? I say, if I want to work, of course. That's <laughs> a legend. I mean, if I want to work, of course, make it happen. Yeah. So he, he sent um, some of my, my material, um, Cutty Six. Um, well, there's two remixes that are coming out. I have the Malo and one La Lengua remix. Um, he picked those two. He was like, Renzo, now nah, these two is bangers. I, I want to go in this, you know? And, and there's um, no hesitation at all. Uh, he's a different species of artist because while recording it, he called me, video call. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, you like this, you like that. And eventually, the whole recording process it wasn't like, you know, uh, he's just putting on vocals and just sending it to you and then you're like, yeah, yeah, that is it for you. He, he's a perfectionist as well and he sent me some, he was uh, on the studio live and recording and he was like, yeah, change it. So I was like, yeah, cool, yeah, you can change it, do this, do that. And we, we were connecting like that, you know, yeah. which it should be, you know. Yeah. All right, so I'll let you introduce your remix. All right, um, Cameron, Cabego. I want to big up um, all the listeners out there. Thank you so much for all the support. Uh, I want to prepare this tune. This tune is a banger. Uh, it's targeting to the world. Mr. Renzo featuring Cutty Rang, Marlo Remix. Go out there, support it, share it. Go on all your social platforms, share the tune and make it happen. Thank you so much. Chica, let's do it. ¿Qué tipo de hombres te gustan? Los hombres buenos o malos. Renzo. Cochi, cochi, Renzo. Tu patrón. Renzo de buena chama. En cuatro de lo. Suave, suave, suave. Suavecito te lo. Mm, rico, rico, rico. Te la pongo en ese. Mm, dudo. Brand new, Mr. Renzo. Cochi Rankin. Malo. 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 Come in love when you bump a chum. ¿Qué tipo de hombres te gustan? ¿Los hombres buenos o malos? Renzo, Cochi Cot Cochi Renzo, tu patrón. Renzo da buena chance. En cuatro te lo. Suave, suave, suave. Suavecito te lo. Mm, rico, rico, rico. Te la pongo en ese. Mm, dudo. I'm in love when you bump a chum And in the ear cause you clung Why see you when me out on the own Girl me bad from me barn me not pulling no stone Caribbean girl why you tell me where you bad so Venezuela deal with it mad so Colombian girls are broke out them tan so Back it up girls put it on your man so Suave, suave, suave Suavecito te lo, mmm, rico, rico Te lo pongo en esa, mmm, duro, duro, duro Ya tu sabes yo soy Suave, 
hecho soy malo, malo, malo. Mami, love when you bump And in the cash you clone. I see you when me out on the own. Girl, me bad from me bad, me not pulling no stone. Caribbean girl, why you tell me where you bad, sir? Venezuela deal with it, mad, sir. Colombian girls, I out them cancer. Back it up, girls, put it on your man, sir. Suave, 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 mm, rico, 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 te lo pongo en ese, mm, duro, 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 ya tú sabes, yo soy malo, malo, malo. Girl, back it up, no more, pay the money, don't think this a joke, me no find it funny, me love when you dress like a Easter bunny, tick, tick, tuck your bum, put, put it on me, me love when you shake it and do it like that, nah, make no mistake when you are mommy, you are Till you clump and I like it a lot You make me have to tell you can't grab Suave, suave, suave Suavecito te lo, mmm, rico, rico, rico Te lo pongo en ese, mmm, duro, duro, duro They get them love, bad man Malo, malo, malo Chica Me gusta verte en cuatro, mi pose favorita Yo te rompo el duro, tú eres viejita Cinco minutos, te rompo la cosita No eres señora, tú eres mamacita Vamos pa' mi cuarto, te cierro y te doy Soy peleador, muy duro como Floyd Hacemos una porno, después yo me voy Cuando tú me besas, tu amiga yo le doy Suave, suave, suave Rico, rico, rico Thank you so much for being on the show. The song is fire. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You know, vibes all, always, man. Vibes always. And I want to thank uh, Mountainside Studio Scriptures for producing this amazing track. Uh, look out for more stuff coming out very soon. Uh, I have a project coming out that is a different, totally different side of Renzo where you're going to see a, a more um, Julio Glacius kind of finish. Yeah, all right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming out with a track like that called Luna. And more stuff like uh, on the soccer side of things, I have like two projects on the soccer side, and then I'm gonna drop another banger from the reggaeton album, and I'm gonna release the album very soon. So you guys just look out, listen, follow me on on Instagram at Mr Renzo Music. You can get all the details there, and um, continue supporting it. You know, uh, this 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 um, sound is a kind of more innovative type of dance where I mix the Trini Bad with the with the, with the Latin and the, the reggae. So this is like a, a, a new version of, of Chili Bad. Mm-hmm. You know, we call it Spanish Bad now. Spanish no. Bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Spanish Bad. So th- this this project I'm very excited about, you know. So thank you so much for having me. All the listen, listeners out there, continue supporting. All right, guys. That, that was Renzo to the world! To the world! <laughs> <laughs> All right, blessings. Bye. Bye. Scotiabank. I want to say thanks to Scotiabank for where I am today with myself and my family. Thanks for them for putting me on the foundation and building me. I have been climbing and just keep climbing. My experience is that they encourage me with these pre-approved loans. I never get turned back and I have a very good credit rating at the bank and that gives me encouragement that I could do better.